Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. Um, so I am Laurence Jacobs. I'm working for Agoria, which is the Federation of the Technology Industry in Belgium. Um, and um, lost my story. So I am um, <laughs> sorry. I'm 39 years old. Excuse me. Um, I've got two kids. Uh, 11 and 13, and I actually grew up in a big family. I have four sisters, uh, two older, two younger. I actually wanted to have a picture where we were all five uh, of us on, on it, but I didn't find it, so that's something that the smartphone has fixed for us now. I mean, we can't lose pictures anymore. Um, and in my family, everybody was into culture, history, art. Uh, my mom went to art school. Uh, my dad studied to be a carpenter. My elder sister is an archaeologist. Two other sisters studied um, languages, English, Italian, French, and I studied history. Um, but since I was little, I had an interest in technology, in digital, in techniques. Um, I would be the one who would fix all the alarm clocks every six months due to daylight saving times, because back then it didn't happen uh, automatically. Um, I was the one um, who would fix the video recorder every time a cassette uh, got stuck or I would be helping my dad, drilling holes in the walls and uh, assembling furniture because my mom would love to uh, rearrange the whole house every year or two. Um, but although I had this interest, nobody ever stimulated me or motivated me to study STEM. So I studied history, modern history. And to be honest, I'm still glad I did it because I had a, bro a broad background um, due to it. So after my studies, um, I started working in the IT industry for more than 15 years um, in an administ administrative supporting role. And actually supporting um, men in advancing their career. And that's something I only realized much later that almost my whole professional life, life I have helped other people, men, in advancing their careers. And nobody was there to motivate me to grow and to discover, um, although my learning curve had already ended after a few years. Um, so in these kind of roles, administrative supporting roles, um, you're often doing a lot of invisible work. You're actually the glue that keeps the teams together. People come to you to ask for advice, to get feedback. Um, but, you, but you're not that often um, rewarded for it. It stays invisible. But I discovered myself that I was good in using digital tools, um, that, I, um, that well, I was good in writing speeches, articles, press release. And although I each time received compliments for that work, I wasn't being formally recognized for it. And that's because there was a bias against my job. And that's the first uh, takeaway. Most of the times, people have expectations for you regarding the job you're in, or regarding the study you have done, or regarding the title you are carrying, but not towards your own uh, capabilities. So um, three years ago, I got promoted, um, and I, um, I became the lead of the administrative team I was in, about eight people. And I really learned a lot there, because it's one thing to be in a team. It's a totally other thing to be in charge of a team. Uh, but my team performed well. But although it performed well, I didn't get a pay increase for this promotion. And of course, I talked about it many times with my boss. And at one time, he told me, OK, I'm going to get you a company car. You're right. But six months after, he changed his story. Uh, but I grew in that job. And it actually gave me the confidence to apply for a totally different role in the organization. But again, a bias towards the job that I was in. Because the manager told me, you know, Laurence, you haven't got the right backpack. You haven't got the right study, not the right experience. And most important of all, that job isn't going to make you happy. And I was like, seriously? I mean, I've been working for over 15 years. I think, one, I've got a pretty good view on what my competences are. And second of all, I mean, I would have liked myself to decide whether or not a job would make me happy. Um, so to be honest, I got refused before even applying officially. So then there was the opportunity to become Women in Tech Ambassador. And I didn't hesitate. Um, well, actually, that isn't true. But there was somebody who believed in me. 
somebody who could um, look in an objective way to me. Um, and that's the second um, uh, uh, takeaway. We need a sounding board. Somebody who can take a step back, who is honest towards you, who's got your best interest at heart, um, and who actually wants you to grow and to succeed. Um, so not only a cheerleader who stays at the sideline, but somebody who's really um, ready to take the first steps with you, who wants to uh, mentor you, coach you, guide you. So I applied and they gave me uh, the opportunity. And Women in Tech was actually my perfect storm, where my skills, my talents, my experience came together. Um, and I grew very rapidly in that role and realizing the poor position women are in, in our industry, and that was being backed by my own experience, by the data. Um, I read a lot about inclusion, diversion, equity. I met a lot of interesting women, a lot of nice organizations. Um, and realizing the poor position, but at the same time also realizing how toxic uh, a male-dominant company culture can be. And realizing that I'd been taken advantage of during the years and for some situations in which I apologized myself. So Women in Tech for me was an eye-opener um, as well. So now in, uh, in Belgium with, um, with Agoria, we're working hard um, with our companies to create inclusive company cultures. Uh, to get them started with diverse teams. Because I do believe we're in the, the right mindset now. Companies do realize that it's not only out of the, yeah, the, the ethical point of view that you need to work with diverse teams. No, I mean, it's got big influence on innovation, on financial results, uh, on uh, better team performance. So we're actually conducting a European social fund project where we have measured the current state of IND in tech. So we have got the data. We've set up learning networks where companies can come together, share best, uh, best practices. Um, and we have created a website where companies can find a lot of tips and tricks and tools because often they realize that they need to get started, but they don't know how. So with that project, we're actually trying to make a big impact on a lot of companies. Um, another project I'm doing is much smaller, but I really like it. Um, it's a project where we are um, creating a postgraduate in IT and digital skills together with um, Brussels universities. Because in our industry, besides needing a lot of technical functions like uh, software architects or data scientists, we also need a lot of bridge, bridge builders. And um, those are people who have got a basic understanding of IT and digital, but who can also make the link with the business side. So, like an interpreter between the IT departments and the business departments. So, and that's what we're aiming with this course because you don't need a computer science degree for these functions. Um, so we're inviting everybody who um, is in a non-STEM domain, so history, psychology, law, languages, to um, actually um, study one extra year and then you can get into tech, you can start working in tech and you'll get a basic understanding of AI, cybersecurity. Um, you'll, get, um, um, uh, you'll be able to do an internship. Um, you'll learn how to code. So this is a um, really nice project because besides the big impact we want to make with the European one, I also am a strong believer of um, creating uh, small and tangible successes and then actu actually to accumulate them. And um, yeah, that's what we want to do, a compound interest with this, uh, with this project, really to boost it. Um, another big step I made um, last summer was uh, publishing my first book. Uh, it's called uh, Nooit nog normaal, Never Normal Again. And it's actually about um, the possibilities digital brings in our lives. Because digital has entered every corner of our lives. Uh, whether you're a student, you're an entrepreneur, you're working in a company, um, or you're trying to make a social impact, digital can be an enabler, and also for women. I mean, this thing has become the, the remote control of our lives. I mean, we can educate ourselves, reskill, upskill ourselves. We can sort out our professional lives, our personal lives. Um, we can start business. We are, we've become visible, and uh, thank you, social media. So. The book um, was a game changer for me as well, 
because people finally realized that I wasn't only the job I was doing, that the content of my job didn't define who I was. So now um, diversity and inclusion are a big part um, of my life. Um, but the most important thing is that I learn every day from people like you. Because in the end, that's what being human is about. I mean, connecting and sharing, like we were all doing in this, um, in this event. Um, sharing stories, inspiring each other, um, empowering each other. Um, yeah, so here I am all the way from, uh, from Brussels to Madrid to share my story uh, with you. And um, I would like to end with these 10 statements because I'm actually writing my second book and it will be about women and technology. And I would be very interested um, for you all to give me your feedback or suggestions uh, on the statements for, um, for my book. So um, uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Senna, for the uh, opportunity. And uh, let's shape the future together, uh, all of us. Thanks.